Action. Yo, with Jillian on the Brownout and a review of Smile 2 in a banner year for horror movies. One of the greatest ever. Um, incredible amount of like over 8 out of 10 horror films came out this year in all directions as well. And I said in the preamble to the show how Smile 1 came out and I re really did like it where there's the A24 crowd that make these, you know, The Witch or Hereditary or, or Art House original films. And then there's been, a, it analogous with that, a lot of standard fare. Like this year, there was a the remake of The Omen, or sorry, the reboot of The Omen, and films like Immaculate and so on were, in a more traditional sense, based on horror movies of the past, but really, really good ones. And Smile 1 was in that bracket. There wasn't an original bone in its body, really, but it was very well done. And it actually had a fantastic lead female performance in it as well, which is something that it shares with Smile 2, a film that possibly exceeds it in every way. So Smile 2 features an absolutely amazing performance by Naomi Scott, who's been in quite a few things, but perhaps not as star-making as this turn is. And the most interesting thing about the Smile franchise at this stage is a lot of these films, whether they're Insidious or The Conjuring or anything that is, you know, sort of demonic possession kind of fair, um, they focus a lot on the, the creature, on the historic nature and old books and, you know, previous encounters with it and so on. They did that to a very small degree in the first film, which was basically um, about a, I think it was a psychiatric nurse or something, who was descending into insanity, but because of this creature, whose modus operandi is it forces someone through very t terrifying hallucinations until they kill themselves in front of someone else, and then it's passed on to them. So it has those sort of post the ring sort of, you know, you pass on the curse to someone else sort of vibe about it. But it focused a lot on mental health as well, um, declining, you know, descending into insanity. This one doubles down on that so much. I've rarely seen a standardized horror trope movie, which this ostensibly is at the beginning, completely abandon that whole notion of who the creature is or anything about it to focus almost entirely the whole movie on somebody's descent into insanity in this case Naomi Scott is like an Ariana Grande sort of massive pop star apparently based a bit on Britney Spears and Lady Gaga who has had a terrible accident with her boyfriend and her boyfriend was killed in the car accident and she was put in rehab for a year and she's making her comeback. And we see very soon that everyone's putting so much stress on a, a normal human being would crack. The entire film is basically in Naomi Scott's head. The She barely is off screen front and center throughout the whole movie. The side characters are almost irrelevant. Who else is in this film? There's the, a very good bit with um, a drug dealer she goes to see, played by Lucas Cage, just to get some Vicodin because she's still injured from the car crash, but they're making a dance in music videos, and it's leading up to her tour. But the whole thing plays out like it would have been a brilliant film about a pop star put under the microscope to such an extent she broke mentally without having the horror element in it, in it at all. Um, it's really well acted and really well done. Um, the like this, this Carl Gallen that turns up in this and the, the next movie I'm going to review as well. He's at the start of this film, which is ironic if you've seen the next film I'm going to review, Strange Darling. He turns up at the start where he's a cop about to transfer this demonic entity onto someone else. He has to find someone. So at the start, he tries to find the worst human being he can to do so, um, which is ironic if you've seen Strange Darling and the, and the opening of that film. Um, it's really well done on every level. The music by Christo, Christabel Tapia de Vere is superb as well very very um, jarring at times and and frightening and it's really well shot and 
when action is needed, it ramps up. But mostly it's about this almost like if you've seen um, Roman Polanski's uh, repulsion, almost about someone inside a flat going mad and understandably going mad from the pressures of everyone around the mum, uh, her mother, Rosemary DeWitt, who just pushes so much pressure on her. And as the movie progresses through her letting more and more people down by her not being able to escape what the monster is doing to her, which is causing these terrible visions to happen and her making her screw up things. The line between what she is seeing and the viewer seeing actually happening and being part of the process to drive her insane becomes really blurred. And it's terrific. It all builds to a climax and maybe the last sort of I've say this about Strange Darlings as well. Maybe the last quarter isn't quite as intensely focused as the rest of the film, but I really don't have any complaints. Definitely, even though it came out around the same time as The Substance, arguably the premier horror of the year and one of the best films of the entire year, it leans into that body horror mode for a shocking climax. But I really love the way that they take the notion of the individual taking their own life and passing on the demonic nature, they really push it to an end game here, which is totally unexpected and, and really quite amazing. So again, another terrific film from writer director Peter uh, Parker Finn, and uh, I don't even think it did as well as the first at the box office, which are often around these horrors being, you know the victim is deaf or the victim can't see uh, some some trope and maybe they've got past that but for a film that doesn't need the horror angle and that uses it very very well to embody somebody in a high pressure environment losing their mind when they're not capable of dealing with the stress because they've just been through hell is um really well done so i'm going to give smile two an eight and a half out of ten